Hey guys, the AutoBleam 0.6 beta release just came out last night, so I'm putting a video together to show you guys how to update your AutoBleam build from 0.5.1 to 0.6 beta. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so here we are. The update is actually pretty easy. What we need to do is we need to make sure that our USB drive with our AutoBleam build is plugged into our computer. And the next thing that we need to do is go over to a website, which I will leave a link to in the description down below as always. And we're gonna go ahead and download the AutoBleam 0.6.0 beta release that was just released last night. So what we need to do is we need to scroll down and you're gonna see there's a bunch of different options here. You've got a clean build, you've got a full build, you've got an NTSCU and a PAL-E. So the difference here, if you go with the full, it's going to have databases for your PAL region games, it's gonna have databases for your NTSC, uh, USA region games, and it's also gonna have your Japanese region games in there as well. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I don't ever install either PAL or Japanese games. I'm only dealing with uh, US games, so I'm gonna go ahead and download the AutoBleam 0.6.0 beta 1 ntscu.zip file. I'm gonna go ahead and save that to my desktop. And it's about 80 megabytes, so it won't take very long. Looks like it's done. And we can go ahead and close our browser. We no longer need that. So I've got my file right over here. We're gonna go ahead and right click on that and we're gonna extract that to its own folder. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our folder and we're gonna stick it right beside it. You don't have to do that, I just like to keep things in the middle that I'm working with so that way I don't get them confused with other folders. So we're gonna go ahead and open up this folder here. And what you're gonna notice in here is that there is a payload folder, an auto bleam folder, a games folder, and a theme folder. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my USB drive that has my auto bleam build on it and I'm gonna set it right beside it. So now we can compare and contrast. If you look on the left-hand side, I've got my USB drive, which has got all the different folders in it. And on the right side, I've got the new build. Well, you will notice that there are more folders on the left side than there are on the right, and that's okay. What we need to do on our USB drive is we're gonna go ahead and highlight our payload folder, which is the one with all the strange characters, the auto bleam folder, the system folder, and the themes folder, and we're gonna go ahead and delete those right off of our USB drive. So it's gonna ask if we wanna delete these, and we're gonna say yes. Perfect, so now that those are deleted, what we need to do is we need to transfer these files over to the left-hand side. Now I do wanna mention, as you can see, I did leave the games folder, and I left the RetroArch folder. You may not have a RetroArch folder if you haven't loaded RetroArch onto your AutoBleam build. So assuming you do have it, it should be there. If you don't, the only folder you're gonna leave is the games folder. The other thing that you're gonna notice is we deleted a folder called system. That's okay, and you'll notice that on the build there is no system folder. That system folder will be created on the initial boot of your AutoBleam stick. So once you pop it into your console, you turn it on, uh, it will create that folder for you and it will show up the next time that you plug it into your computer. So what we need to do now is we need to copy everything from the download and we're gonna go ahead and copy it onto our USB drive. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. Okay, perfect. Now that that's done, what I do wanna do is I wanna stress the importance of deleting all the folders that are on your USB drive, as I did, rather than just copying the new files and dragging them over and replacing the existing files. I did check in with uh, Screamer, who is the lead developer on this project, and he did say, you're gonna to wanna to delete those files and then transfer the new ones over, just to make sure that your build comes in properly. That's all that we needed to do to the USB drive. It is ready to pop into our PlayStation Classic. Before we did that, I do wanna say that they did add an extra feature. If you guys recall with AutoBleam previously, when you go into the games folder, everything needed to be within its own folder. So any game that you had, for example, Rayman 2, The Great Escape, if you double click on that, the game was inside of that. And what we needed to do is we transferred the game over and then we had to put it in its own folder. That's no longer the case. He has a script in there that uh, upon scanning the games, if you place a uh, PBP file or a bin queue directly in this folder here without putting it 
within its own folder, it will detect that and it will actually create the folder. So you no longer need to do that. You can literally just grab your games, dump them into the games folder. No need to create additional folders for things to run properly. It has a script that will do it automatically. So that's a really awesome feature and it does take a step out, which makes things easier for you guys to do at home. So now that's all that we need to do. We can go ahead and close this folder over here because we don't need it anymore. Our USB drive is now ready to pop into our PlayStation Classic. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just remember to unplug your PlayStation Classic, pop the USB drive in, wait about 10 seconds or so, and then power on your PlayStation Classic and boot it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to switch over to the PlayStation Classic now. All right, guys, so here we are. What we need to do is we need to press the X button on our controller so we can rescan the games. I'm going to go ahead and press that X button now. And even if you haven't changed the uh, the games on the console, you still need to press that X button because you are installing a new version of AutoBleam. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of a change on the main menu. And what I'm going to do really quickly is talk about uh, some of the changes that you guys are going to see. So the first thing that you're going to notice is AutoBleam will start when you press the start button, which is normal. You've got your scan, rescan at X. You've got RetroArch for square, triangle for about, select for options. Your L1, when you hold that, that's going to give you either your memory card or your game manager and then l2 and r2 if you press them both at the same time that will actually power down your console and not only will it power it down but it has a script specifically so that way it will power down the console properly and it will prevent you from corrupting your usb drive now i haven't heard very many people have issues with corrupting usb drives but uh, the developers have taken an extra step just to make sure that it's going to power down properly so that way you guys don't have any issues with your usb drive build the other thing that you're going to notice is when i hover over the l1 and advanced options. If you remember from my uh, preview video for 0.6, there was the uh, a different version. There was a different option here when I believe if you press the triangle key, that's no longer there. They've gone ahead and implemented the new version of AutoBleam, which they call uh, Evolution UI. That's going to be now when you press start. So when you press start, you're actually going to get that new version and it's going to be there right and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and press start now. Okay guys, so here we are. There's gonna be a couple changes that you guys are gonna probably notice right away. When you look at the game information where it says 007, the world is not enough, Electronic Arts, it was released in 2000 in one player. Uh, just to the right of one player, it actually has a few extra symbols on there. Uh, the first one there is gonna tell you how many discs the game is. So if we're gonna look for a game that has multiple discs, for example, Final Fantasy, you'll see that it's got three discs uh, labeled there. The other thing that we're going to notice right away is that it's going to tell us whether or not it is a USB drive or if it's a pre-built in game. So if you look at this right beside the one disc, you've got USB. But when I go over to Battle Arena, you're going to see that there's a PlayStation symbol. So what that's going to indicate to you is that game is pre-built onto your PlayStation Classic. It's one of the stock games and any of the other games you've added will be on your USB drive. The other thing that you're going to notice as well is, as I mentioned in the previous video, that we now have background music playing in the background here. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second so you guys can actually hear that. So that's there and uh, that's a really cool feature. I absolutely love the fact that they did that. It just adds a little bit of character to your build. So definitely, definitely thumbs up to that. The other thing that they wanted to mention is they have uh, changed the coding around a little bit and they now say that you should be able to have up to 450 games or more on this carousel. So you should be able to load up quite a bit. Uh, one of the other features that they were talking about is if you press the L1 and R1 buttons, it'll jump you over to the next letter in the alphabet. So if you're trying to jump around really quickly, L1 just jumps you A over to A and then if you press it again it takes you to B and if you press it again it takes you to C. If you press it one more time to D and you can just keep jumping over to whatever letter you want to quickly access the library. So if you do have 100 games this is going to be a much easier way for you to, to bounce around to get to the title you want rather than having to manually shift over one at a time. So that is a fantastic fantastic feature and I think they uh, they really are looking at all the small details and trying to make this build as uh, as awesome as possible so definitely kudos to the developers 
So my current build, as you guys can see, has 3D artwork and 2D artwork. From my understanding, what they're going to do on the actual full release is they're gonna revert everything back to 2D artwork. The reason that they're gonna do this is because there isn't a way for them as of yet to change the artwork style on the built-in games. As we've been saying for quite some time, the uh, AutoBleam team wants nothing to do with writing any data changes to your PlayStation Classic console. And as a result of that, there isn't any way right now for them to change what the artwork is for those pre-built-in games. So what they plan to do is for uh, the databases that match your game with the artwork and with all the information, they're likely going to be switching that all back to 2D artwork just because it does look a little strange to have 2D artwork for some of the games and then 3D artwork for others. I personally prefer the look of the 2D artwork, especially with this user interface. I think that it'll look a little bit nicer and a little bit more clean. So that's something that you guys can expect as well. And then the other big major feature that they've got going on right now is that uh, you've got multiple save states. So when you go down and you take a look at your save state options, you've got slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four. So you can actually save up to four different uh, save states just like you could with the SNES Classic or the NES Classic, you can now do it with your PlayStation Classic, so that's awesome. Uh, as I said previously, it doesn't really affect me. I'm the only person playing and I don't usually have multiple uh, save files going for each game. I'll usually just have one file and I'll play it. Um, but for people that have two or three people in the family, even if there's uh, only two people playing, uh, you're, you're able to now have your own save state for each individual and that makes things much better. Or if you're playing a game where there's potentially different options that you can choose within the game, you can now do that and save it in each save slot so you can access whichever one you want at, the, at that time. So definitely an awesome feature. I love to see that that's there. The other thing that they wanted to mention as well is that the memory card manager is not yet available in this Evolution UI build. They are working on it. Uh, it is just not something that was ready for this beta release. So you can expect that it'll be ready for the actual release, which we're expecting in a couple of weeks, maybe a little bit longer, depending on how much time the developers have on their end. But uh, just know that the memory card manager currently is not functioning on this build yet. So if that's something that's really important to you, you may not want to do this beta release update. If you haven't even messed around with the uh, with the memory card manager, then definitely do the upgrade. This build is, is so much better than the previous build. It's an awesome build. The only other thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly is they added a really neat feature, and this doesn't really change that much for you guys, but uh, they've got a new option now to select widescreen. So it's a 16 by nine ratio, aspect ratio, or you can keep it at the four by three screen aspect ratio. We've got a lot of people that are saying they don't like the black bars, and if they don't like the black bars, now you have the option to switch between the aspect ratio so that way you can get quote unquote a full screen experience. Keep in mind that if you do go with that full screen experience, uh, it doesn't actually change the resolution, you're essentially just stretching that image. So some people don't care about that, others do. Just keep that in mind that it is now an option for you if you really don't like the black bars along the side. So in order to turn on that widescreen option, if you press the circle button out of here and you go back to your boot menu, if you press the select button to enter into your options, you're gonna have something called widescreen. So if you want that uh, widescreen display, you can go ahead and press the left arrow key on your D-pad. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable the widescreen option. If you don't want that, you just press the right arrow. So that'll give you an X, which means that it's not gonna be widescreen. If you press the left button, it's going to be uh, a check mark, which indicates that it is active. Now we can go ahead and press back. I'm gonna jump back into AutoBleam and I'm gonna load one of the games here. I'm gonna pull up Crash Bandicoot and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like in widescreen. All right, guys, so here it is, here's Crash. Uh, I'm just gonna play around a little bit just so you guys can get an idea of what this widescreen feature looks like. You can see it's just essentially just a stretched image. So uh, some people don't like that, others are gonna love it. So it just depends on your personal preference and how you like to play your games. But uh, I think that I personally am not gonna have the widescreen feature on uh, just cause it then distorts the uh, the visuals of the game, but that's, that's up to you guys and it depends on how you guys like to play your games. So. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press my reset button on my console to bump out of the game and create a save state. And then for your save state, what you need to do is you just need to select which slot you want. So after you've pressed the reset button on your console, if you wanna save it to slot two, you just press the X button on slot two. 
and then you'll notice that it is there now. Perfect. And uh, the only other thing that I want to mention is that if you press the select button on your uh, controller while you're on this menu, it'll switch between internal games. And as you can see on the top, it's showing internal games. If you press it again, it'll only show you USB games. And if you press it again, it'll show you everything. So if you want to quickly switch between only looking at your USB games, uh, only looking at the pre-built in games, or if you want to see both and you can do that. Some people don't like having the, uh, the pre-built games showing at all. So if you want to get rid of them, you just press the select button until it only shows your USB games. So that is another really awesome feature. But that's pretty much all I've got for you guys for this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, share it for anybody who's interested in hacking their PlayStation Classic, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.